This is figure 5.3 in our textbook, so let's start by looking at the Indo-European language family. That's this one right here uh, that has the biggest trunk. And you can see that it's subdivided into four branches. The first branch is the Indo-Iranian, then the Baltic Slavic, then the Romance branch, and then the West Germanic branch. And so we see that the Indo-Iranian branch is the biggest. It's got over a billion in people there. And so it's a bigger influence than either the Romance or the uh, Germanic languages. And we see that the two biggest languages associated with it would be Bengali and, uh, and Hindi. And in a few seconds, we'll see what land area that covers. Uh, the second Indo-European language uh, family branch is this Baltic Slavic. And you can see from the leaves here that Russian and Polish would be the two biggest languages associated with it. Over here, the third branch, the Romance branch, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, all of these Southern European countries. And again, we'll see the land area in a few seconds. Um, and then lastly, the West Germanic branch, which would include us, the English, as well as German. Um, and you can see from up here that close to 47% of the world's population um, speaks an Indo-European language family. So I want to pause here a second. I want to go to figure 5.9 and just show you the, the land area that's covered by this language family. So here, here we are in figure 5.9. And it shows you the extent of the language family. We see that Southern European countries are generally Romance language. We see that the West Germanic branch, northern, northern part of uh, Europe, over here the UK, Ireland, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. And then look at the Baltic Slavic. Look how far east it goes across the Eurasian continent, all the way over here to East Russia. And then a similar thing with the Indo-Iranian. Look how far east it goes all the way over to Bangladesh. So uh, it's a, a tremendous distance. And it amazes me because these languages seem so different to me than what I have seen with either the Romance or the uh, Germanic branch. Um, very different. Well, let's go back to um, figure 5.3 and look at the other language families. So here we are back at figure 5.3, and the next language family is this Afro-Asiatic, and look at, look at the leaf here. It's the Arabic, Arabic language. So we've already had a file dealing with that, what it means to be an Arab. It's that you speak the Arabic language. And so we know that Iran is not Arabic because we just saw that it had an Indo-European language family. And so we have Arabic and we have Berbers. And so they were two, two big leaves off of this branch. Now, we also have the Dravidian branch. And we also have the Altaic branch. And remember, we talked about the Altaic language when we talked about Turkey because we said Turkey had such an important relative location. And remember, we said Turkey looked to the uh, west in terms of its commerce. It looked to the south in terms of its religion. But it looked to the east in terms of its language family. So that means all these Central uh, Asian countries uh, would be associated with Turkey. And then we have over here the Austronesian and um, Philippines, if you were a uh, Filipino speaking Tagalog, in the Niger Congo. I'm going to pause here. We'll go to the next biggest language family, uh, which will be um, dealing with Mandarin. So here we are looking at the Sino Tibetan language family, and look how big it is. Uh, over a billion in people and the language the biggest language associated with this branch would be Mandarin so in other words the Mandarin language would have more people speaking it than than any other uh, on the planet here we are in figure 5.5 .5, and look at the whole Western Hemisphere over here boom so when people migrate, two of the biggest things they bring with them is their language and their religion. And if you look at the Western Hemisphere over here, it's almost all Christian, uh, predominantly Christian. And between the Germanic and the Romance branch, it covers, um, it covers most languages in this whole Western Hemisphere. So migration is uh, one big way that um, languages migrate and move. 
Then we see the Altaic language. Again, we've already spoken about this, but here's Turkey, centrally located, and here is the influence all the way across Central, uh, Central Asia. Arabic, look at this. Now, we've already had this file, but it's so important because a lot of students misunderstand. Uh, not all Arabs are Muslims, and not all Muslims are Arabs. And so it, here it is, North Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and the eastern end of the Mediterranean, and all the countries associated with that. So that's who an Arab is. And notably, look, Iran right here is not Arab because we've already seen it was part of the Indo-European language family. And it's not Turkey. Turkey's not Arab because we've seen it has that Altaic language. So it's real important to make that distinction. Over here in China, the Mandarin, uh, we've already said it's the biggest individual language. Um, there's only, my understanding is there's only four tonal sounds in the Chinese language. If my life depended on it uh, to, to learn it, I, I'd have to die because I don't hear those sounds. And it's an ideographic language, and so like a dollar sign, uh, we know that that means dollar. Uh, they would have symbols like that to represent different uh, characters and, and different words. And you have to know about 10,000 ideograms to be able to read a, a newspaper. And so it's a, a very difficult language to learn. And it, certainly when people learn our language, it takes a great deal of effort. And so I think we ought to be sensitive to the fact of how hard it is for other people to learn our language. <laughs>